Good morning, I'm meteorologist Joe Fitzwater. Hopefully you're having a very enjoyable Monday. Weather-wise, we're looking pretty good out there. A lot of sunshine expected this afternoon, so if you do have any outdoor plans, today would be a great day to get those knocked out as we will see those temperatures rise all the way up into the 70s. Very nice day uh, on the way here across the tri-state. Things do begin to get a little more interesting, though, as we head into your Tuesday. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has outlined a 1 out of 5 risk for severe weather across parts of West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, and Southern Ohio, and then across uh, Southern Ohio into Central Ohio and Central Kentucky. That's where they've issued a 2 out of 5 risk for severe weather. So this includes the Scioto River Valley. This includes uh, back toward uh, the Vanceburg area there, Northern Kentucky, and then up toward parts of U.S. 35, uh, from Jackson up toward around the Chillicothe area. So again, this is for Tuesday afternoon, primarily into the evening and even the overnight hours. And I think the timing of this storm system is going to be a limiting factor uh, for some of us here with our severe weather risk. What's the main uh, issues that we're going to be looking at? Damaging wind gusts. Uh, can't rule out maybe a brief funnel across uh, our western counties, but it's a pretty low risk overall. I do think uh, damaging wind risk is going to be most likely, and it's because of this wind shift that we're looking at here in the upper uh, as we go up into the atmosphere. This is going to be what we call a veering wind flow. So we have a clockwise flow here that's taking place, and that generally uh, will uh, show that we have more of a multicellular uh, environment here. So this is more like a, a linear storm line uh, type of setup that we're going to be looking for here as we head toward the evening hours. Can't rule out maybe a rogue thunderstorm or two popping up before these storms kind of congeal into a line. That's where we would have to watch out for the risk for a brief funnel or two, but that's more likely to take place across parts of central Kentucky and western Ohio, and we'll show you that uh, here in just a minute. Also, not a ton of wind shear present. There's some, but it's not uh, great. And uh, as far as hail is concerned, not as likely because it's going to be a little more moist in the atmosphere than what it was uh, yesterday here across the region. We did see some pretty decent hail here across parts of the tri-state, particularly uh, along the Clay and Braxton County borders where we did get some photos of some half dollar size hail uh, in that area. Again, the setup pretty interesting. This is Tuesday morning. We'll have a warm front that's going to be lifting its way up to the north here across the area. Cold front trailing behind that back across parts of Missouri, down into the Ozarks. But as we head toward Tuesday evening, this is at 8 p.m., this front's still pretty far back. This warm front kind of uh, taking its time, pushing up to the north here. I think this is going to be a limiting factor here for severe weather across parts of the area. But I think if you get back toward parts of southern Ohio and eastern Kentucky, we're still going to be seeing that mode of uh, severe weather risk uh, still being there. So let's take a look at some of the models here. This is uh, at 5 p.m., uh, Tuesday afternoon. You're going to notice there's absolutely nothing going on in West Virginia at 5 o'clock, according to the uh, North American model uh, at this point. So again, most of the activity farther back to the west. And even if we go back in time, you'll see uh, this is at 2 p.m. Still nothing going on in West Virginia. So I want to emphasize that most of the day in the tri-state on Tuesday is going to be dry. Uh, we might have a stray shower or two. Uh, but a lot of us are going to be dry. Temperatures are going to warm up into the 80s. That veering wind flow, uh, getting that southeasterly flow, that kind of does a couple of things if I go back here. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a southwesterly flow. But what that's going to do is allow those temperatures to really climb up. So I think we'll get well up into the 80s here across the region. That southwesterly flow will bring in more moist air. And you'll notice dew point values are in the low 60s. So that should support some thunderstorm development. Here's we head into the afternoon and evening hours, primarily again in the evening. Again, this is 4 p.m. You'll see nothing going on here across West Virginia, but we do have the storms that are firing up across parts of Indiana, back toward parts of Western Kentucky. And this is going to be the focus point here for scattered showers and thunderstorms uh, during the evening and overnight hours. We'll continue to put this into motion. This is at uh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and this is where we start to see a couple of storms fire up here in our region. And this is what we'll have to be careful of. If we could see a strong storm or two fire up, we could see perhaps a brief threat for a rotating storm. These would be uh, most likely to perhaps produce still some damaging wind gusts, but can't rule that out. That threat is not zero, but this is going to be the main maker here of some storm activities. We head into the evening hours, and this will primarily be a damaging wind risk 
with this line of storms back to the west. We'll continue to put this into motion. This is 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and it's just now making its way into the region. So again, this is going to be an evening to overnight issue, and that's going to limit that severe potential here across the region. So I think maybe that storm or two here across the region that will fire up out ahead of the main line, that's going to be our main threat for severe weather, and that's why we have that 1 out of 5 in effect. Then we get the actual cold front itself as we head through the early morning hours, but it kind of loses its steam because we lose that energy from the sun. Uh, so we'll see a few scattered showers and thunderstorms during the overnight, maybe a gusty wind or two. But again, this threat is overall not that big, but it's something that we'll keep a close eye on. Then once this scoots off to the east, we'll start to see some improving conditions here as we head toward Wednesday morning. So that's kind of a, a, a look, a setup at what we can expect here excuse me, as we head into uh, Tuesday night and into Wednesday here across the region. And this is something that we'll continue to keep a close eye on. But for now, uh, I think if you do have any plans Tuesday, you're going to be in good shape for the most part. Just keep an eye on the sky. And of course, download that Storm Tracker 13 app, which is completely free on the Apple as well as the Google Play stores. We'll continue to keep you updated. In the meantime, hope you have a wonderful Monday. For Storm Tracker 13, I'm meteorologist Joe Fitzwater.